Arsenal have reactivated their interest in Arthur Melo. He has been linked to the club since the summer of 2020 because Juventus feels like they have to offload him off their shelf because he has really failed to hit the ground running at a side which goes by name to Arsenal. There was a very big story about that story and I'm coming in here to give you more light about it in there for you. Today Arsenal have launched their away kit, black in color looking good. I'm going to show you how Arsenal players have really looked in it, all have modeled in it and how and what they've said about the kit in there for you. Then we are having Gabriel Jesus and uh, who is talking about him? It's obviously Emily Smith Throwaway coming in and really throwing lots of hails to him. And then there is a Zichenko story to us now. Gabio Magales, it's not Gabio Magales, Nuno Tavares is saying no to a move to Olympic Marseille because it doesn't feel like favorable for him. Then and lastly, what do we have to talk about? Is that all? I know there is a story I've forgotten, but all in all, this is the Rokani Media Football. How are you guys and where are you watching us from? We go by them, so Rock and David. Smash the like button, comment and share. If at all you're watching us for the very first time, endeavor to subscribe to our channel so as not to miss out on stories that we do upload in here on a daily. Now, let's go straight into let's go straight into the Arsenal Hour Kit. As you see it there, that's the Arsenal Hour Kit launched today while they were in Orlando because they really Sorry, they. I think they're now in Florida because that's where they're going to play the game of Everton, Orlando City, and um, Chelsea, isn't it? I think that's it. So that is Martin Odegaard, Sally Bowilliam, and Emily Smith throwaway in there for you. One of these from the Hell End Academy, that is of Arsenal. This one was bought from Real Madrid, and this one was bought from Lille, I think like four or five years back, and is signed for Arsenal in there for you. And returned and replayed very well again as a side, which goes by the names of Everton. And Arsenal fans were so much excited, saying that, oh, he can be better than Ben White. I know he's talented. He might be having a better ceiling than Ben White, but let's first wait and see how is it going to go on and trans transfer in all... all tra how is go how is going to go on and perform in the prem let's wait and see that guys let's not let's ring fence our excitement guys let's ring fence it because you guys you might get excited for no reason either for you now the gabbies the gabbies gabio magales gabio jesus gabriel martinelli modeling into the arsenal jersey it's nice their black is good and looking great either for you. And if at all you really find it interesting and very much nice, you can really go to the Arsenal website and go and order for it. They will deliver it to you. This is the Emirates. Gabio Jesus. Gabio Jesus, the marquee signing of Arsenal. Man who is on fire. Two friendly games, three goals, and one assist. What? What a player. What a player Arsenal has brought in in the project of Mikel Arteta. And he went also ahead to model into this black jersey of Arsenal in there for you. Brazilian, 25 years of age, coming to Arsenal to go on and do the needful in there for you. Don't tell me that he is surplus to the necessity at Arsenal. No, he was that missing piece in Arsenal's jigsaw this season and if at all he was here last season Arsenal would have been really in the Champions League but he's coming he's coming in here to give Arsenal players a boost to see to it that he really gets Arsenal to where they are supposed to be now the man himself Bukayo Saka in there for you this is Bukayo Saka I see Odegaard I see Emily Smith throwaway I see Lokonga so that's how Arsenal launched their kit of 2023-2023 season in there for you and they're all looking lit so what do you have to say about the kit? Go into the comment section below and tell me what you think about that kit that Arsenal has just launched today. That kit has been delivered today, has been really launched today, so you have the right to go in there and look for it and go ahead and pay for it in there for you. So that's the kit of Arsenal. And now let's get into the real transfer news story because I thought, like, how can I really start a video without letting Arsenal fans know that they've really released your away kit? So you have every reason to be in here and because this is the source that this is the number one source of all your news and information from all over parts of the world now let's go to Arthur Melo Arthur Melo is really a Brazilian who came in in who came in Europe and Barcelona bought him I think when was it Barcelona bought him way back and then they paid 60 six million that is Juventus paid 66 million to get his services from a side which goes by names of Barcelona to Juventus and when you look at him he has been in Juventus for some good years he has failed to really to transform and convince the managers in there for you and then they are really looking for a move to 
they are looking they are searching a move for him to be sold out of a side which goes by names of juventus he's 25 years of age in there for you he's 1.7 meters tall and he's a midfielder he mostly plays as a defensive midfielder and i think this is the place where arsenal fans really are yearning to get in a player like him in there for you now who has brought us this story it's the mail has told us that arsenal are monitoring developments with juventus midfielder arthur Melo once again as they weigh up a potential move but nothing is advanced as it stands they have considered utility demands but until players leave the move has been shelved in there for you so the mail has told us that arsenal are monitoring developments with juventus over arthur Melo in there for you let's wait and see what is going to happen there for you and gaikombo lecobetus in there for you he has come out and told us that new arsenal have reactivated their interest to sign arthur Melo. the player and Juventus are mutually talking about skipping the US tour to see how the negotiations progress. Arthur Melo never considered Roma among his options. It's between Arsenal or Barca now. Arthur Melo to Arsenal, he's one of those players that Arsenal wanted on loan in the January transfer window. You know that very well. And when they really sat with Barcelona to sorry, when they really sat with Juventus to talk, Juventus wanted Arsenal to take Arthur Melo on a two-year loan. And Arsenal were, were telling them that we are only taking him for these six months. Then we give them, we, ask, we, we assess him. If, if, if he performs well, then we will go ahead and really activate the buyout clause in there for you or the loan of two years in there for you. But Juventus said, no, we're not giving him your player. Now, Arsenal have really gone ahead and reactivated their interest in Arthur Melo because they are looking for a central defensive midfielder to be the backup of Thomas Partey in there for you. Actually, if, we, if you have a if you have if you have a backup a backup if you have another seed him at Arsenal you can use party as a box to box player and he can get you more in there because he's good he's good with the ball going through those the central axis of the midfield and making those progress runs that are so much deadly to the opponent that Arsenal is playing. So if at all Arsenal gets in the CDM, they will be having lots of options. When Thomas Partey gets an injury, then a CDM will come in through and really play that role. Then the likes of Odegaard, Fabio Vieira, Grant Xhaka, um, Lokonga can go ahead and play the box-to-box -box role in there for you because that single pivot will be so much covered in there for you by Arthur Melo. Then you can even bring in Tillemans, Arthur Melo too, and they go ahead and they do the job. So I will believe that Arsenal are really having a perfect plan and Edu is really chasing for another Brazilian to come in at Arsenal. Remember right now, Arsenal is having four Brazilians and if Ator Rafinha had not yet turned down Arsenal to go ahead and go to Barcelona, Arsenal would have been having five Brazilians. And now, it's the Samba, Samba style dominating Arsenal in there for you and it's because of Edu Gospa but even Mikel Ateta is really in love of these players in there for you. So Arsenal really looking to bring in Arthur Melo in there for you but you might not be knowing who Arthur Melo is and what he has done so far in the game of football. Allow me show you what Arthur Melo did last season onto the screen of Rokani Media Football because you need to be having facts onto your fingertips about these players before you even get excited about them here onto this channel in there for you when you look at the coppa italia he played four games <laughs> you get zero goals i'm not don't get surprised of goals because he's really he's really a central defensive midfielder in the serie a he played 20 games in there for you in the champions league he played six that means he played a total of 30 games in there for you last season in there for you. So that is arthur melo the lad that arsenal is really chasing after right about now now after that we got obviously to what we call the heat map and the sofa score stats in there for you. I really want to show you how this guy will come in and really help Arsenal in there for you. Right, that's the heat map. That's the heat map of Arthur Melo as you see it. He operates so much. This is where his operations take place. It shows you that he's a certified CDM. Not even in the final third. You see, there are minimal, there are minimal, there are minimal drops of energy in the opponent's half in the opponent's half you see especially in the 18th box area of the opponent but he operates so much in here that means his main aim is really provide provide protection to the back four in there for you then when he gets that ball he can make those progressive runs but he doesn't really reach in here into the box of the 18 yards box area of the opponent because he knows that his main role is to protect and really stop 
the opponent from really from really accessing the area of Arsenal. So you see, that's where his operation is so much in the central. And I think Arsenal would have loved to have a player like him in there for you. That is Arthur Melo for you, and that's how he really makes his runs and everything in there for you. In our next video about him, we'll come out here and tell you what he really does best in there for you with progressive runs. Mm. Uh, per 90 that ground duels won the aerial duels won either for you and Arsenal fans will really get to know what a player they are really being being chasing or reactivated or re reactivating their interest in in here to this channel which goes by the names of Rokani Media Football. So Arthur Melo to Arsenal looks like it's on and let's wait and see where whether the credible the credible sources like Romano and Dimazi especially from Italy all Makato are really on this and will be here to get into that everything is going on as planned by a man who goes by the names of Arthur, Arthur Melo in there for you. All right. After Arthur Melo, then a deal that really was broken by David Austin is still on and Fabrizio Romano has come out and really told us a lot about this story. He has told us that Zinchenko is the main target, but not only the but not the only one edu loves to work under the radar and i'm sure he's working on something else too in there for you so he was being asked on the court offside on the court offside he will go podcast that do you think zichenko is going to be the last signing of arsenal <laughs> he said no arsenal are still chasing for more signings in for you i told you by the beginning of the season michaela tater told the board and edu that i want seven signings seven signings i want a 22 man or fully full or a fully fit squad of 22 players that's what michael ateta told the board of arsenal and that's what the board is trying to deliver to him as per now they've so far brought four and that means three players to go and zinchenko coming in this week obviously we know that he's going to come in because man city have given them a good light to negotiate on the personal terms when the personal terms are done as no, we really make their first bid of 30 million pounds, which is going to be accepted by Man City. And then Zechenko is going to be the fifth signing of Arsenal. But Fabricio is telling us that Arsenal are not yet done. A do likes to work below the ladder or under the ladder. That means he's working secretly. He doesn't want news to be everywhere. That Arsenal is so much interested into this. He wants the news to spark out when they've already agreed personal terms and and they've agreed a deal in principle with the club such that when the deal sparks out Arsenal just accelerates it to the climax and <laughs> signing the player and getting him to Arsenal so far Bricio has confirmed to us that Arsenal are really working under the ladder and there she's sure they're working on something else too in there for you not a player who goes by the names of Zichenko only he told us yesterday that Arsenal really want a a left a left winger who is really going to go ahead and play or really play and compete with Bokayo Saka into that position in there for you. Now, when he was on the court offside, he went ahead to tell us this also that Arsenal have been in talks with the Bokayo Saka's camp over a contract extension since Feb and considered it a priority for this summer. Despite top clubs monitoring the situation, Saka's priority is to stay at Arsenal. He loves the club. So, Arsenal really want to give Bokayo Saka a new contract. They want to tie him on a long contract. They want to see him like having a contract over like five next years at Arsenal. <laughs> I think they're going to add him more four years at Arsenal because he's left with two, two years. So they're going to add him more four years because the project at Arsenal, if you want it to get, if you want it to get where it is, people like Bokayo Saka don't need to be left out of this. And how do you confirm that you won't leave them out of this project is simple. Get them on their own contract, get them the money they want, and get in people like Gabio Jesus who are 25, almost in the same age. So, to go in and really get this project where it's supposed to be. So, Arsenal, I think they are planning for the next two or three years to win the trophy. And I told someone that in the season of 2024, 2025, that's when I expect Arsenal to win the trophy. Right now, if at all they win it, it's going to be a mistake. It will be just like a shocker, like you saw Leicester City coming in and winning it in 2016. It, it will be like that. But I think Mikel Ateta and the board of Arsenal really know that in 2024, 2025, would have built a very strong squad to go ahead and win 
the Premier League. Obviously, they can because if at all you see how the project is being built, summer in, summer out, you get. Last season, they brought in six players. Were they six? Let me see. Lokonga, Nuno Tavares, Ben White, Tomiyasu, Ramsdale, and Odegaard. Yes, six players. This season, they want seven. That means they are really doing a drastic change at Arsenal of players that are really fitting to the philosophy of Mikel Tater, and that is the work of Edu to go ahead and really get those players at the London Connolly to see to it that he really convinces Mikel Tater and he really gives him what he wants. Because you have to back your manager when he asks you something and having done all what Mikel Tater has done with a little, with a little, with a little quality and thin squad he had at Arsenal, the board, I think, was impressed. They said, all right, if Atoli has really managed to go on and do that, when we get him more players, he's going to come in and do the needful in there for you at the side, which goes by the names of Arsenal. So, Arsenal want to tie Bukayo Saka on a loan contract, though there are other Premier League teams that are really eyeing what Arsenal is really doing with Bukayo Saka. Teams have not been mentioned, but these are the teams. Man City and Liverpool are the ones that are interested in Bukayo Saka because Man City are looking for a replacement of Riyad Mahrez, you get because he's 32 they've given him is it a one year or two years contract in the you so in the next one or two years they really need to get someone who's going to who's going to play on that side then they're also looking for a replacement of sorry liverpool is also looking for a replacement of mohammed salah because they know that in the next two three years mohammed salah won't be at liverpool because he would be like 33 and so they would have really gotten another replacement for him and all of those two teams are eyeing Bokayo Saka in there for you so we are waiting to see how that deal is going to come to happen in there for you is Arsenal tying him on a loan contract or not let's wait and see but Fabrice has told us that that is happening exactly right about now now Nuno Tavares is not convinced to join Marseille that's it and I brought you a story yesterday Fabrice Romano confirming to us that he has said he has said in his own words that nothing Nothing is going to take him out of Arsenal, and that's why the deal of Marseille and Arsenal loaning him there was not progressing and was halted. The player is not convinced. So maybe the agent of <coughs> the agent of Notavares might be looking a perf for a perfect loan of Notavares because Arsenal don't want to sell. They don't want to have a co they don't have they don't want to have what we call a buyout option like they did with Gwenduzi with Marseille that really pained them a lot because Gwenduzi picked up Gwenduzi would have really come in through direct direct into the double midfield pivot of Arsenal he would have been playing with Thomas Pate in that role because at Marseille he has really mushroomed into a player that every Arsenal board member and coach and manager are really looking at and saying oh this boy is really nice you get so if at all they had really put it in in the William Saliba contract, they would have gotten him back. You get? But for Gwendusi, they put even there a buyout clause of 9.5 million pounds. And it was paid to them. It was paid to them by Marseille. And Gwendusi is that side playing in very well. So no whatever is telling, I'm not going there. But even Marseille is started has started literally to look elsewhere to get in a left back in there for you because they really believe that. He was going to fit into the style of play they are going to play next season because the manager wants to play with the wing back with three central defenders. And they believe that no, Tavares would have been a better option for that. But Tavares has said, no, I'm not coming to you. Find your levels elsewhere. I'm not coming. I'm not coming. I'm not coming. Then I've had Emily Smith Rowe talk to the standard today about what is happening at Arsenal and the new signings. And guess what? When asked about Gabriel Jesus, this is what he said. He's been fantastic since he came in. It feels like he's been here for a couple of years. Everyone knows how good he is. He can't wait to get started with him. We can't get started. We can't wait to get started with him. It would be good if he could bring that winning mentality and help us out. Obviously, obviously, when you when you're asked who is the the breath or all the breath of fresh air at Arsenal, obviously it's Gabio Jesus. He's going to motivate these lads that I'm 25. I've won very many trophies, but we can also make it here. And he's going really to uplift the spirits of these lads in there for you. Because last season, what led Arsenal to be beaten and miss out of the top four positions of the Premier League to go to the Champions League 
was simple. They lacked that person or leader to really lift their spirits high that you can you can go on and do and get the job done. And you can't use a player who has never done it before to really uplift the spirits of the players of Arsenal. You get? You can't. You can't. You can't. You have to bring in a player to talk to these players who has ever done it somewhere else. Now this season, Gabi Jesus is going to be so much integral on the field of play and into the dressing room, especially most of the times when they're really going to access and play very big games in the field. Because last season, what really what really failed Arsenal from winning those big games was simple. Arsenal never and never at all, never and never at all, had that cutting edge of experience. You get? Their team looked inexperienced. You get? Thomas Partey was a winner way back in Atletico Madrid. I think he's now making his third season at Arsenal. So they see him as the usual person. But Gabriel Jesus has done it when they are seeing it. He has come in. He has come in very many times at the Emirates and really played against Arsenal and Man City have beaten them. You get? So trust me, he is the right guy as Emily smith Rowe is really talking about lifting the title and bringing the winning mentality to the team. So he's going to lift them and Mikel Ateta made a very broad signing that is going to see his team really know that everything is possible here at Arsenal in the foyer. Then Emily smith Rowe said on possibility of playing Force 9, as a youngster, you don't really care where you play. You just want to be playing. I am open to anything. We will see what happens in the for you. Guys, these players really one thing i've really known about them is that they they get lessons of how to express yourself in public and diplomatic relations because the way they reply it's like they don't want to come out and really command the manager or really put the manager in attention that i can play such and such a role no he has just told them that i'm a young i'm a young lad and as a young lad i just want to play the game of football Anywhere you put me to play, I'll go ahead and play there. So he said, we will see what happens in the field. But all, all of us, we know that Emily smith is going to be playing onto the left onto the left flank in there for you of the attack. You get? We know that very well because he's going to be battling for that position with Martinelli in there for you. So we wait and see what Emily smith has for us this season in here for you. That's what Emily smith had to say. Then let's get to Martin Odegaard, Mr. Captain of Arsenal. And I think it was confirmed to us in the game of Everton that he's the captain of Arsenal. And I know he's really going to be the captain because he's really composed, very much easy. He's adorable. And there is something that Charles Schwartz told us that he is the ears and eyes of Mikel Ateta. Every time the ball gets out when Astro is playing last season, guess who Mikel Ateta called on the touchline to talk to? He always talked to Martin Odegaard because we really believe that he's the lad that can really go ahead and really pass on the information to his players very well. And second, that's as why he was calling him. He is the he is the central axis of Arsenal. He is the heartbeat. He is the engine. He is. He is the reference point to all Arsenal players in the midfield. And he dedicates the rhythm at which Arsenal is going to play. That is Martin Odegaard in there for you. And Martin Odegaard has come out and told us that I feel more confident and more calm on the pitch. So I just try to use the ball. I just try to use that. Playing a lot of games on high level in a good way and do what's best for the team. That is what Mikel Ateta told me. Sorry, this is what Martin Odegaard told BBC. So talent wise, I really love him. I really love him. I don't support Arsenal, but you guys, this guy is something else. Martin Odegaard is something else. Coming in at Arsenal was really a very big signing. And I know right now Real Madrid are saying, oh, we would have really sent him on loan again. And I think we'd have gotten some more money out of him because they only got 30 million pounds from Martin Odegaard. But with the way Martin Odegaard is playing in at Arsenal, I think they would have got more. They would have gotten more, according to me. That's what I really believe as this thing stand in here onto our channel which goes by names of Brokani Media Football. Martin Odegaard to me was my best Arsenal player. I really love the way he does his things. He, it's natural. It just flows out of him. You get his flair, his touches. You get he's press resistant. The way he really runs with the ball in the midfield. He marauds everywhere. His creativity. And I told you guys, I'm really waiting to see him do those inter passes or double passes with a man who goes by the names of Gabriel Jesus. I never saw it a lot in the game of 
Everton. Reason being, they are not training together for so long, and the match situation is different from the training ses from the training session. At the training, they might be really linking up very well, but in the match, it's always a different situation altogether. So I just want to see them play more games together, and I think by the time Arsenal plays a team which goes by names of Crystal Palace on the 5th of August, this lad would have really integrated so much well into the Arsenal team and Odegaard is really going to go ahead and really surprise you this season. Trust me, he might be one of your best players this season. I'm betting that on. I'm betting on that. So guys, thank you very much for watching us in I Go By The Names Of Rock and David. Feel free to tell us what you think about everything I've talked about in here for you. Arsenal launching their jerseys. If at all you've not yet watched it either for you, these are the jerseys of Arsenal that they really launched today. That is the away kit of Arsenal. And tell me what you think about the Arsenal away kit in there for you. Players modeling into that. Lokonga, Emily Smith Rowe, Bukayo Saka, and Martin Odegaard. The man I've just talked about in there for you. Gabriel Hesos. The breathe of fresh air at Arsenal in the for you. The Samba boy and the Samba style is taking over Arsenal in the for you because we even talked about Arthur Melo being linked to a side which goes by names of Arsenal. So it looks like the Brazilian Empire is taking over Arsenal in there for you. So your reaction to those stories, a welcome to the comment section below. Go by the names of Rock and David. Smash the like button, comment and share. And please and please subscribe to this channel so as not to be certain stories that we do upload in here on a daily. But after subscribing, hit the notification bell that will enable you to get notified each and every time I upload a video to this channel. I sign out for now. See you later. May the Almighty God protect you abundantly because without the Lord, we can't be anything. Please, trust with the Lord. Trust in Him. If you're really having something that is not going well with you, just go on your knees and pray because He answers prayers. That's it. He's doing lots of wonders in my life. Hope he can extend his hand to yourself or to you and he can really get you going and running that side in there where you are in there for you. So I sign out for now. See you later guys because this is our first second video of the day. We started with Man City training in America and now we are back with Arthur Melo to Arsenal and very many other stories are really coming up. Maybe a live stream in the next one or three hours. I'm out.